Well, this is Big Daddy O, and I'm coming to you live. Uh, I'm just doing another quick tutorial here from uh, for Ghostly Rich on this um, 2007 Chevy Cobalt LT with a 2.2 EcoTech engine. As you're looking at this, you notice there's a few things missing, like uh, air intake, throttle body, map sensor. That would be going right there. That would be your map sensor hole throttle body. This here is a uh, air regulator vibrates the thing. This is uh, pressure relief for your engine. This engine has no PCV valve. It actually breathes right through the air intake. I'll show you the air intake hose. And of course off to the side you see the air filter. So what I've been doing is I've been doing some cleaning clean the inside of this I notice there's a bit of oil in there and the reason for the oil over time there's the air breather hose that comes right off the engine when this is sitting here it connects right to that line and it actually breathes right into the air intake and sometimes you get oil vapor and that collecting in there and you can get a little ugly what I did is I cleaned it out a little bit I used a little mass airflow sensor cleaner and then just wiped as best I could on the inside and then what I did is I the reason I took this apart in the first place is because I was getting uh, engine light with a uh, throttle body uh, not being able to close properly all the way it was staying at 25 percent so when I took this out it was really ugly it was black and gooey inside so I got some uh, basically combustion chamber cleaner but the best would be a throttle body cleaner don't get carb cleaner throttle body cleaner will clean this right up and uh, you can you can press on this that's not a problem once it's out of the car if it's in the car don't ever press on it the reason you don't is because sometimes and these are live a lot of the times sometimes the engine will send a signal to it to close up if you're throwing cold liquids in there and if it closes up it has enough strength to nip your finger off so whatever you do don't ever play with these live make sure you always disconnect them uh, just for safety okay so I cleaned it all up and as you can tell it's all nice and shiny now this particular engine has got about fairly close to 190,000 kilometers on it I just did a road trip uh, about 2500 kilometer road trip and uh, it worked perfectly fine. I didn't get any stalling or anything, but uh, my I put an OBD2 reader on it because I was getting a check engine light, and yeah, it said my throttle position was like at 25%, which is a little high. So when I'm done here, I'm going to check what it's at, and I'm going to start putting things back into place really quick. And I'll do piece by piece as I do that, and uh, you can do the reverse. You'll notice one thing though that, um, and I noticed as I was taking this all apart, that you really don't have a lot of torque on these screws. You don't have to crank them to the hilt. Just make them good and snug and tight, but don't crank them. I mean, half the stuff is aluminum, and you just tear the threads apart. All right, we'll just hang on. We'll get right back. So this here, this is your map sensor okay and it actually comes out quite easy it's one screw and then you pop it off you might find it easier to um, as you do this you'll notice that the screw sits down in here and right there is a fuel injector and then there's a connector for the fuel injector and a connector for the map sensor they are right there is your fuel injector connector and there's your map sensor connector, okay? Uh, it's easy enough to pull those out of the way. The other thing that I found is to pull the air hose. There's an air hose. Right here is the air hose. And it connects from here to there. So what I did is I pulled this out of the way just to give myself some room. They go in fairly easily. To pull them out of the way, there's sorry about that. There's a little clip right here. You just move this clip with your thumb. You'll find this little little lever piece right 
right there. And you can move that over with your thumb and it releases it from this tube. You just move it over there and there and that releases and you can pull it off. Um, just push it over and then give it a bit of a pull and off it comes. Alright? You know, like I said, there's a little just kind of release lever thing right there. Don't know if you can see it too well. Let's see if we can get a better shot. Anyways, you push that over with your finger. You'll see it when you uh, when you're doing it, and then it, as you can tell, it just uh, if I get a good shot of the inside here of this. It just releases that that lock on there. Okay, and that way it unlocks from that that piece. That way you get that out of your way, and it just makes. Uh, makes life a little easier. So I'm going to put the map in and uh, basically to do the map all it does goes into that little hole just give it a little wiggle down like so and it's the same for taking it out. Eh? You just see it fits a little snug just wiggle it down Stick a screw in there, tie her up. Like I said, not a lot of torque. There's no reason to crank the torque on these things. It's just, I mean, half the time, most of the stuff is either plastic or aluminum with brass inserts just to hold the screw. So, done. That's it. Okay? It's in there. That's all it needs to do. Just, just hold it in there. Then you can take this down here. Throw your uh, injector connector back on. Again, take the jet injector off. This injector connector right here. You'll notice this green lever. Push it back. And uh, it releases this thumb. And that way you can push down and pull it off, right? But this has got to be back. One sec, I'm going to do both hands and I'll be right back. So, there we go. That's what it looks like when she's pulled back. Now you can push down on the little, little thumb lever here. And just fire that back in there. There we go. Locked in. I'm no professional at this. I'm just some guy in this backyard or his garage having fun. And then the map map connector is right there. Just push that back on. Click. There we go. So now that's done. And I could put that inside here. Put that on the inside of this. Just keep it nice and clean and neat. There we go. Now I can put my hose back on. Click. And you'll notice that this here is, that's for your uh, overflow for your radiator. That's what that tube's for. Um, you can either let it sit loose or you can put this over it. Personally, I'll just let it sit loose. Click. That's in place. But like I said, to take them off, there's a little thumb release. You push on that thumb release, off they come. That's all. Boom. Click. So, there we go. Now, time to put the, uh, the throttle body back on. I'll show you how that goes in just a second here, but and it's, it's not really difficult. Just make sure things are clean. Right, make sure she's clean. And then try not let it slide too much around on the uh, on the seal. And then lock it back in place. I'm gonna use two hands on this, so I'm gonna put on standby. So I got the throttled body sitting there, and I'm I'm actually gonna use a screw with just a number 10 socket on it. And most of the stuff is just 10. Um, except for when you take off the air plenium. Uh, there's a couple of release rings and they're actually eight. So just do cross. Right. 
I'm not tying them up, I'm just putting them in snug, like so. I can feel it actually starting to sink up a little bit. Just going to check how much wiggle room there is. No, not much wiggle room at all. Again, that's it. I didn't have to use much more than that to take it off. I'm just really giving a good crank with my hand. If you want to give it a little, little torque with a wrench, just don't, don't overdo it because like I say they're just plastic and brass and aluminum and uh, all it needs to do is press against it, the seal on the bottom and that's it. Now once I put the power to that, which I'm going to do real quick, I will no longer um, play with that. Doing so could cause personal injury and I'm not into personal injury. All right, so I put my cable off to the side here. I'll just run it back. Again, to take this off, there's a little gray clip here. You just pull that gray clip back, and then it'll come off. All right, there's a gray clip, and it keeps keeps you from pressing the uh, thumb button. So, and just locks it all up in place so it doesn't come off while you're driving. done. Alright, it's actually fairly simple overall to do that. And uh, yeah, when you're cleaning your map or your MAF sensor, just a quick little thing on that. If you're cleaning the MAF and or MAP, mass airflow or mass air or manifold air pressure sensor, use the mass airflow. Doesn't matter if it's gonk or CLC just make sure you use the right stuff. Don't use the other stuff. Don't use carb cleaner. Don't use throttle body cleaner. You'll actually destroy it. So use a mass airflow sensor. Unless you feel like replacing your map or MAF. And they're about $25 to $50 each. Not in my budget to do that. Just a quick note. What I did is, for cleaning it all that, you'll notice I have a, a bucket here. I didn't want to spray the stuff all over the place. Because it's it's nasty. All right, that's That's this stuff right here which is combustion chamber cleaner, but you can get throttle body cleaner. Almost has the same constants, but the stuff is a little nastier. Um, don't spray it directly while it's sitting on the car. Take the throttle body off the car and then spray it. Don't, don't do it. If you're going to clean your throttle body while it's on the car, make sure you disconnect it and only spray the stuff on a rag. Don't spray it directly into the chamber. It'll mess up your car, thin out your oil, all that kind of stuff. Just uh, don't do it. It's not, not a good thing to do. Okay? This stuff is really good. It cleans a lot out, but uh, it could mess up things too. Alright? Just a uh, uh, side note for you. And make sure you work in a well ventilated area. This stuff is uh, not that great for your health. So, if you want to know, there's your mass airflow sensor. It sits in the on the chamber of the air intake. Okay, there's your air intake. There's your connector for your mass airflow. Again, disconnect it before you work on it. Take it out. You'll notice it's sitting right there. You can either clean it while it's sitting there, or you can take it out with a couple of Phillips screws. If you do take it out, do not touch the mass airflow sensor. The oils from your skin of that could really actually ruin it. Again, use the proper stuff, mass airflow sensor cleaner. Mine was actually in fairly clean, fairly good shape. Uh, I did check it out. You can still see the colors of the diodes and everything in there, so it wasn't overly dirty. I thought it might be because I didn't change the air filter for a while. It got really dirty. But, nope, it's good. Alright. So, this is uh, looking at my air intake here. I just thought I'd show you the inside of this. A little bit. Mine actually had a fair amount of oil in there, so I uh, I sprayed a little bit of the mass sensor in there and cleaned up a bit of the oil out of this thing. It's a sealed chamber, as you can tell. It's all sealed. 
cleaned up in there a little bit. And the reason again for the oil coming in is, is you got this feed line right here, right from the engine. And so you get oil vapor coming in there. And like I said, this thing's got 189, almost 190,000 on it. So it accumulates after a while. Not that I was dripping out, but I could see it you know, a little bit running on the inside. So I, I used a little MAF cleaner in there and, and just kind of wiped it out. And I uh, got it cleaned up. As you notice, there's a screw here. We'll be uh, using that in a second. And this sits on top of the throttle body. And as I flip this upside down, and I just tie it onto the throttle body with this screw. And then at this end, you'll notice is the other ring, which connects onto, and I'll show you, just connects onto your air filter. And this connects onto the engine. So here it is. This is what it looks like. Right there. Okay. And uh, basically, all you need to do is give it a squeeze down, and you'll notice also there's a pin piece up here. Okay, so I'm not going to put that quite tie that in yet until I put this in place. There. Okay, that's down. That's down. This. Here is a clip. I'll grab my pliers in a second. You just put it back up to where it comes. That's how you take it off. You take that. This was stuck a little bit, so I took uh, my pliers, lightly gripped this, twisted it back and forth, then popped it. Inside here is a, a push pin. I'll show that to you right now. Sorry, had to go back. So that's what it looks like. You gotta pull this up. Okay, it looks like this when it's down. So you get underneath there and you, and you just pop it up. And then you push it down in there and it locks up. So I've just seated it on there. Like that just to show you. Put that on there. Bump. And that's what she looks like when, when she's on there. Just if you spin, if you're able to spin it, you'll find there's a little groove or slot in here where you can actually put the screwdriver and pop this. There we go. So there's a slot then you can go in there and pop it up. Okay? So you can spin this by hand. It's a little tough but it can be spun by hand. You just look for that and then you can get a screwdriver in there. Pop. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go down here. I've got this pushed down all the way. It's sitting in there pretty good. Yep. Sitting in there pretty good. It's on top of the throttle. So now all I need to do is tie this. I changed my bit on the end of my screwdriver to a number eight. And now I'm just going to tie that up onto my throttle body. Again, not a whole bunch of torque. No reason to crank this thing. Eventually you'll need to take it off and clean the throttle body again. So and I said about putting the clamp back on. Adjust my pliers. So I just kind of slip the, that back on there. Put this back on here. It just rocks in. Clip here. Clip there. Now I'm just going to connect my connector. Again, mass airflow sensor. The gray thing, you push it back. Put it on. Clip. Lock it up. So there we go, mass airflow sensor. The next is to put the engine cover on, but what I want to do is start out first and see if it actually runs. So the car's doing what I expected. It's idling a bit high because it has to readjust itself to the new throttle body position. And uh, right now it's putting in a little more fuel and air than it should until it retunes itself. Either that or I could remove the back battery lead and let the engine retune itself uh, right now, you can see that I still have the engine light coat on. I'm going to go take my OBD2 and clear that. Or I can again pull the battery lead and let the whole engine retune itself. So, uh, I cleared my engine codes. I've retuned uh, the car. Took it out for a run. Nice and high. Lots of volume. And uh, 
Now, what I'm doing is I've just recorded some data here. I'm just going to uh, go back on my OBD2 here. And I'm going to go to uh, live data. That way I can actually see what's going on. Just letting it load up. Right now the idle is about 650. It's nice and smooth, it's quiet. So cleaning the throttle body helped quite a bit. What I did for the car is I disconnected the battery leads, let it sit for a bit, touch the two leads together, put the leads back in the car, and took it out for a drive. So let's see what I, we got going here. There we go. So everything's within range. Uh, long, these are sh short fuel trim and long fuel trim. Long fuel trim is you know, up a little bit, it's not in zero, but um, that's just the car adjusting itself and that's fine. That'll change as I drive. A short fuel trim adjusts a long fuel trim over time. Then you can see here, that's my map, uh, it's not doing bad. There's my throttle position sensor, it's at 16% now. It was at about 25, 26 when I started, so cleaning it up helped quite a bit. Now the throttle position sensor is about where it should be, about 15 or 16% at idle. All right? And you can tell my RPM right there is doing about 600. And 50, 6, 70, it's bouncing a little bit. It's not bad. If I want to see a graphic mode, I'll have to just put it on there, press my OK button, and you can see it's bouncing a little bit for my idle as it's still searching and adjusting itself. That's a spark advance. So over time, all of that it should settle out, 16.9 to 17.3. So it's it's adjusting up and down a bit. Yeah, should be okay. It's a lot better than what it was, and uh, should help con cut down the consuming of fuel. You know, instead of having the throttle so far open, the car adjusting for a open throttle and trying to you know balance the fuel. And the reason you take a look at that, and that's what these t tell you, the short uh, trim, fuel trim one, and short fuel, long fuel trim. If you ever want to find out about these, there's an excellent video uh, out there. I, I'll have to get that for you. Uh, the guy talks about short uh, fuel trims and long fuel trims. It's very, very informative. It's two half hour segments, but well worth the watching if you're really interested in finding out how your car adjusts itself for uh, air fuel mixture. Anyways, that's uh, all I have to offer you on this one and uh, all the best to you. If you uh, like what you see, uh, click on like or subscribe to Ghostly Rich and we'll talk to you later.